Hello everyone, this is Cynthia on Embracing His Word. So, I am so grateful for the opportunity to speak into your life. Once again, I am continuing my video series on prayer. So, this particular video is in reference to how to have powerful and effective prayer. And so, um, when I think about the time when I initially began to really get into into prayer and pursue prayer with the Lord that was many years ago I found myself in many years ago in a situation where I was going through uh, very severe trials and I, I felt as if God had abandoned me and allowed me uh, to believe many lies of the enemy that God didn't care that God uh, had abandoned me so I really had to wake up from that and the only way that I um, came out of that um, that led that situation that led me into depression was one day as the voice of the Holy Spirit was speaking to me while I was lying in my bed that God was would not be pleased with me that I should get up the Holy Spirit began to speak to me to get up out of my bed to, that I was in a warfare warfare battle and that I need to start praying and so I chose to obey the Lord. So if you are in a situation and you're finding yourself going through something very difficult in life, it may be a divorce, it may be legal issues, it may be a sickness or your health is failing. It may be that the, the physician have given you a diagnosis uh, that is not good. But I want to encourage you to rise up and to stand on the word of the Lord. Are you gonna believe the report of someone else? Or are you gonna believe the report of the Lord? So let's stand up and rise up and, and do powerful, effective prayers and see the miraculous hand of God move in our life. God can move powerfully and effectively in your life, but you got to choose to obey the Lord. You got to choose to surrender to the Lord. You know, God chastises his children. If we were not his children, he would not chastise us. So if you're going through chastisement, just surrender with a heart of obedience, with a heart of humility, and allow the Lord to teach you as you go through this, whatever the situation may be, and to begin to move powerfully and to show himself strong in your life. So the very first thing that we want to put our focus on is, I would say, is choosing to humble ourselves and choosing to be obedient unto the Lord. That's one of the first powerful ways that we can um, begin to... Um, Start our prayers and have powerful and effective, uh, a powerful and effective prayer life is humbling ourselves and choosing to obey, having the right attitude. Also, that means that we need to get into the Word of God, learning exactly what it is that God is teaching us in His Word. Not only learning what uh, God is teaching us, but we want to know about the character of God. We want to know about his ways and his precepts so that we can pray powerfully and effectively. So to pray more effectively, take time to get to know the one to whom you are praying through his word. Make Bible study part of your day every day. Step number two, you want to pray uh, an effective prayer by asking for wisdom. I would like to read this particular scripture uh, in the book of Proverbs chapter 4, starting in verse 5, it says, So make wisdom your quest. Search for the revelation of life's meaning. Don't let what I say go in one ear and out the other. Stick with wisdom and she will stick to you, protecting you throughout your days. She will rescue all those who passionately listen to her voice. Wisdom is the most valuable commodity. So buy it. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. Wisdom will exalt you when you exalt her truth. She will lead you to honor and favor when you live your life by her insights. 
You will be adorned with beauty and grace and wisdom's glory will wrap itself around you, making you victorious in the race. What a powerful word. So we want to pray and ask God to give us wisdom. And you know, in the book of James, it also says that if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. God will give it to us liberally, freely. So we need to begin our prayer time asking the Holy Spirit to impart wisdom, to impart understanding and revelation. The next thing that we want to do to pray powerfully and effectively is by remaining in faith. Once you know what the word says about your situation uh, and you have uh, God's perspective on it, uh, the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, giving you some wisdom and guidance, then settle within yourself what God's word has said. Trust him to keep his word. Thank him for leading you and guiding you and answering you. Don't let anything dissuade you from what the Lord has shown you. Stay faithful to the truth that you have received. And you know, when I uh, was having that problem, not really believing God's word oh, so many years ago, uh, feeling as if God had abandoned me, I really had to get back in the word and and to build my faith once again. I, I remember going to a mall and I saw this particular pillow and it had like a string on it that you could hang it on something. And written on the pillow, it says, blessed is the man whose hope is in the Lord. And I said, oh my goodness, this is a word that's speaking to my heart. I purchased that pillow. I hung that pillow in my bathroom, bathroom. So when I walk in my bathroom every morning, I would see that pillow that has the word of God on it that says, blessed is the man who ha whose hope is in the Lord. So we have to put our hope, we have to put our faith, our trust, our full reliance in the Lord and demonstrate to the Lord that, Lord, I believe you because you're all powerful. You're almighty. There's nothing too difficult for you to do. So we have to choose to stand by faith, trusting God to deliver, to heal, to set free and not uh, wavering in our faith, not listening to the naysayers, but believing God's word, what he said he would do. The physician gave you a bad report. Let's believe the report of the Lord, that by the stripes of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are healed. Now, the next powerful thing that uh, the, the very fourth, the last thing that we can do as mighty prayer warriors is that we have to be willing to forgive those who have hurt and wounded us. Because if we hold unforgiveness in our hearts, God um, the, turns a deaf ear. He will not hear our prayers. He will not answer our prayers. So we definitely want to make sure we are practicing forgiveness. We are quick to forgive and not hold grudges in our hearts, not allowing anything to grow into a root of bitterness. So Jesus definitely taught his disciples about forgiving in prayer. So I want to read to you uh, Mark chapter 11, verse, starting at verse uh, 25, says, In the morning they passed by the fig tree that Jesus spoke to, and it was completely withered from the roots up. Peter remembered and said to him, Teacher, look, that's the fig tree you cursed. It's now all shriveled up and dead. Jesus replied, Let the faith of God be in you. Listen to the truth I speak to you. If someone says to this mountain with great faith and having no doubt, mountain be lifted up and thrown into the midst of the sea and believes that what he says will happen, it will be done. 
This is the reason I urge you to boldly believe for whatever you ask for in prayer. Believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, this is Jesus teaching the disciples about having faith. And he says, whenever you stand praying, if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, now he has switched the, the subject to unforgiveness. He says, whenever you stand praying, and if you find that you carry something in your heart against another person, release him and forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also release you and forgive you of your faults. But if you will not release forgiveness, don't expect your Father in heaven to release you from your misdeeds. You know, this is such a powerful word that Jesus is teaching us today. It applied to us also today that we must release uh, unforgiveness from our hearts and so that we can receive the blessings that the Father have for us. And I believe that many today are sick and firmed and infirmed in their bodies because of a root of bitterness, unwilling unwillingness to forgive others who have deeply hurt and wounded them. Until that is uh, repented, that person is released and let go, and they are honoring and obeying the word of God, they will continue to ex experience the sickness and disease in their bodies. And oftentimes people are diagnosed with cancer and most time is a, is a result of bitterness, a bitter root that has taken place in their lives. So let's put into practice, I encourage you today to uh, walk as one that when you go before God in prayer, you are practicing powerful, effective prayers because you're walking in total obedience to the word of the living God. 